hello everyone today we will uh, discuss about the idlers so this is the main device used in the belt conveyor system uh, there are two types of uh, idlers are there uh, one is uh, carrying run idlers and second one is a return run idlers so the main use of the idlers is as follows so first the use of the idler is to support the conveyor belt along with load on upper run so this type of idler is called as a carrying run idler then second use of the idlers is to support belt on lower run so these idlers are called as a return run idlers so in both the ways so it can it is a support the upper side of the run of the belt and the lower run of the belt the third use of the idler is to support the belt at loading point with minimum wear next fourth one is to align the belt on pulleys next is to give true profile to the belt next is to change the shape of run from true to the flat so these are the uses of the idlers now we will see the types of the idlers so first is a roller type idler with ball bearing so in this diagram you can see the uh, idler with the ball bearing so the it is the use for light duty application so this type of idler is called as a roller type of idler with ball bearing and it is uh, applicable for low loading condition or light duty application second type of idler is a roller type idler with a roller bearing so this type of idlers is again used for the belt conveyor and the application is it is used for the heavy duty application or high loading conditions or whenever we want to transfer the load with a large quantity or large capacity in such a belt conveyor the roller type of idler with roller bearings are used next third one is a rubber covered idlers so it has a thin rubber sleeve is provided to avoid the abrasion in case down side of drive where dirt is present so this is a third type of idler next fourth type of idler is a impact idler then fifth type of idler is a disc type idler sixth type of idler is a spring type of the idler so here in this diagram you can clearly visible the impact idlers so it is applicable for very high loading applications then this type of idler is also there and a spring type of idler is also there for the application of the heavy duty loads next point is a belt take up devices so to provide the sufficient tension into the belt to avoid the slippage or slag the belt take up devices are used so first belt take up device is a screw type of take up device so it is used to maintain the sufficient tension into the belt so here you can observe the in diagram uh, the screw type of belt take up device so the belt is uh, mounted on the tail pulley and a screw type or bearing housing for the shaft on which a screw type of the arrangement is attached so Uh, whenever the nut is rotated against the hand wheel force uh, the required tension f1 and f2 are required force is exerted for the belt so that will be called as a tensioning of the belt so here again on top you you can also see the belt take up device that is a screw type of belt take up device so by rotating the hand wheel uh, we are adjusting the tension into the belt so this is the first type of belt tension de device that is a belt take up device that is a screw type of the take up device second is the vertical gravity type of take up device so here in this type of dead weight is used uh, which is attached to the take up pulley and bent, which, which is attached to the take up pulley so that uh, required tension is uh, provided into the belt then here in diagram you can observe that tail pulley then belt carrying idlers and belt return run idlers then snub pulley is also provided to give the required tension into the 
bell drive and bend pulleys to change the direction bend pulleys are used then here you can observe the dead weight is attached at the bend pan in the guide wheels so that the required tension will be provided in for the belt drive next third one is a horizontal type take up device and fourth one is a winch type or winch operated take up device so here in third diagram you can observe the horizontal type of the belt tension uh, or take up device here uh, a guide frame is there on which uh, pulley trolley is mounted and wire rope through wire rope and bend pulley attachment the weight is uh, uh, located inside the pan and the required tension into the belt is provided by the shifting of the pulley trolley in the opposite side of the belt mounted on the tail pulley and head pulley so here in this diagram you can observe the uh, the required tension in the belt is uh, obtained by moving this uh, pulley trolley in this direction along opposite direction by using this dead weight so this type of take up device is called as a horizontal type of take up device then th next one is a winch type of take up device so here same horizontal type of device is used instead of dead weight here motorized winch is uh, used so the power operated motor is uh, there and by using the winch the trolley is moved from the against the uh, belt direction and on to with the help of guide frame so here tail pulley will move in this direction by by using the pulley trolley and uh, required tension is provided for the belt so this uh, motorized winch is rotated along that winch the wire rope is uh, wounded and the trolley will move in opposite direction against the belt tension so the required tension is provided into the belt so such type of tension device is called as a winch operated tension devices next parameter is to calculate the capacity of the conveyor so how the capacity of the conveyor is calculated Uh, the uh, rate at which material is being carried out by the conveyor is called as a capacity of the conveyor or it is also called as a volume rate meter cube per second or it is also called as a mass flow rate in kg per second then second one is effective belt width that is a small v small b so it is the width of the material storage onto the belt that is called as a belt effective belt width so these are the two important definition for a designing of the belt conveyor first one is the capacity of the conveyor that is it is nothing but the rate at which the material is being carried out by the conveyor and second one is the effective belt width the width of material storage on to the belt now let us see uh, how uh, the capacity formula is developed for the belt conveyor design so capital b is the uh, belt width m then small b is the effective belt width which is calculated by using the formula 0.9 b minus 0.05 meter then v is the belt speed in meter per second q is the capacity of conveyor in a meter cube per second m is the capacity of the conveyor in kg per second rho is the mass density of the bulk material in kg per meter cube so this is the terminology for the calculation of the capacity of the conveyor then for horizontal belt conveyor capacity is calculated by using the formula q is equal to cb square v in meter cube per second and a small b that is the effective belt width is a 0.9 b minus 0.05 meter therefore mass capacity m is equal to rho into q where c is equal to surcharge factor so the surcharge factor is uh, considered for type of the belt so in this table you can see the which parameters are there for the uh, capacity of horizontal belt conveyor that is the uh, angle of idlers with horizontal angle of repose of material that is a uh, psi 
and surcharge factor capital C. So these three parameters we are taking into consideration in the capacity of the horizontal belt conveyor. So for flat horizontal belt conveyor, the angle of repose is lies between the 15 to 20 and surcharge factor is lies between the 0 0.067 to 0 0.09. So for this is for flat belt and for true belt, uh, the for two idler, three idlers and five idlers, depending on the number of idlers, the angle of repose and the surcharge factor is considered. So here for five idlers, uh, angle of repose is uh, 15 to 20 degree and surcharge factor is a 0 0.1652, 0 0.185. Similarly, it is used for three idlers and two idlers. So in this way, we can calculate the capacity of the belt conveyor by using the formula. Uh, Q is equal to C B square V and B is calculated by using the formula 0 0.9 B minus 0 0.05 meter. So the final capacity, mass capacity is calculated by rho into Q. Then next one is a, a capacity of inclined belt conveyor. So for inclined belt conveyor, Q is equal to K B square V meter cube per second. So this is the volumetric capacity. Uh, B is uh, 0 0.9 B minus 0 0.05 meter. And uh, mass capacity, therefore, it is equal to rho into Q, where K is the flowability factor. Now, by using the standard table, flowability factor K is calculated as below. So for type of belt plane, belt inclination, if it is a 10 to 15 degree, or 16 degree to 20 degree, flowability factor is a 2.65 into 10 raised to minus 4. And for 16 degree to 20 degree, it will be 2.5 into 10 raised to minus 4. So this is for plain type of the inclined belt conveyor. If pleated belt is there, then uh, belt inclination is uh, lies between 21 to 25 degree, 26 to 30 degree, and 31 degree to 35 degree. So, uh, similarly, flowability factor K is used for as a 2.35 into 10 raised to minus 4, 2.20 into 10 raised to minus 4, and 2.05 into 10 raised to minus 4. So in this way, the capacity of the inclined belt conveyor is used. So the main difference between the horizontal belt conveyor and inclined belt conveyor is that in horizontal belt conveyor, uh, surcharge factor is considered, that is a capital C here in the formula. And in case of uh, inclined belt conveyor, the flowability factor K is considered and angle of belt inclination angle is also taken into consideration for the determination of the mass capacity of the conveyor. So in this way, we can determine the capacity of the belt conveyor for material handling system. Thank you for watching.